Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so today is going to be, I think, a pretty quick video. It's what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the schematic that I have on the PFC, the Power Factor Correction Circuit. This is a circuit that's uh, it's a collaboration with John Audio Tech. We're making a power supply for his audio amplifier he designed, and actually it could work with any kind of audio amp, of course. Um, it's going to be about a 400 watt amplifier, and there's two sections of the you know two converter sections. The first section is the power factor correction where we bring the AC in, make a nice clean 400 volts. So the input looks clean. Doesn't matter what kind of power cord you put on there, pretty much. <laughs> so it's going to be isolated. We're going to have a regulated 400 volts, and then from that we're going to create our plus and minus voltages for the amplifier. All right. So this is just to kind of wrap up the PFC. Not fully wrapped up because I haven't selected all the parts. Uh, we're going to wait until we get ready to do the board design to actually pick the final parts. Uh, I've got a video where we did select some of the parts. And I got a video before this one where I showed you a math tool that you can use. I'm going to show you a little quick section on that in this video, I think. So let's just jump over and, and take a look. All right, guys. So I'm at Infineon and I pulled out the application note right here, version one, uh, May 2008. It's the design guide with this constant conduction mode PFC. Okay, now this is for the series, so we should be able to get it. Now the XX, we're gonna have the 05 is one we're kind of targeting, but it could be you know one of the other ones if we can't find it. But it, there were thousands in stock, so hopefully that won't be a problem. Now here's the table of contents. The top part after the introduction, section two, kind of takes you through some equations to calculate parts for the uh, converter. And then they've got a couple different chips here. Uh, one has brown out, one has frequency setting. We're gonna choose one that has a frequency setting. And then we have the voltage loop and current loop compensation. I think this topic, uh, deserves its own video. <laughs> we'll try to make it short though. Okay, let's just take a walk through this note so you can kind of see. So I, what I suggest is pull this down if you want to go through the design with me and kind of calculate some of these scenes on your own. Here's a couple different versions of the chip right here. And here's what they're doing. They have the universal input, 85265, uh, 50 hertz, you know, it's really, like 47 to 63 to cover all the frequencies but that's those frequencies don't really have any issue uh, with any of this design stuff except for maybe hold up um, you might consider that 390 volts dc we might i think we're going to shoot for 400 volts and this is 300 watts we're going to go for 400 so it's pretty close to what we're going to do now switching frequencies 65 kilohertz fixed for the example they're giving and we're going to do i think 120 kilohertz so here's the calculations for the bridge i'm going to show you the math that i used and then show you the schematic and then power mosfet gate drive so this is just talking about that kind of stuff it kind of walks you through the boost diode and they're showing the, how much power dissipation is giving me on these and what kind of heat sinking. And the heat sink, I think, we're gonna talk about the heat sink in another separate video, so it'll just be a short video just on heat sinks. So, inrush current bypass diode. Uh, so, we have D3 up here, so we're just, uh, that kind of helps charge this output capacitor without having to go through the inductor. Now here's boost inductor formula and calculating all the things you need for that. And look, they actually go through an inductor, uh, how to design for the, this kind of toroid using the send dust powder. And I'll, and that, that'll be another video that I'm gonna talk about magnetic design. So you could kind of skip this part if you want. Uh, but it's interesting to read through. Okay, now AC line filter again another video <laughs> uh, another short video because we'll just keep these little topics to you know concise short videos i think and here's your boost output capacitance okay so go through all this comes up with 
couple of different equations. I've got a third equation I used for output load. These two have to do with input current and hold up time. This hold up is 20 milliseconds. It might be based on that 50 hertz, which if you base it on that, then if here in the States where we have 60 hertz, you're gonna have plenty enough hold up. So that's, that's a great number to use actually. Current sense resistor calculations. And here's the frequency setting. And it says only for the 01, but I think for the dash 05, it's, it's kind of the same curve, okay? So if you want to switch to say 120 kilohertz, come over here, come down here, somewhere around 37, you know, K ohms, I guess. So uh, that's just the way they do it instead of having an equation. And this one has to do with the O2, the brown out. kind of see the equations there and here's the current for the supply voltage and this is kind of what some of us call a kickstart circuit it's kind of a poor man's linear regulator uh, I hate to call it that actually because it's just a nice linear regulator and this one has an on off control so you don't really need this Q2 you can just use a Xenier from there instead of the Q2 it actually come from the base down to ground so it replaces r2 and q2 so yeah so that that's one way to do it uh but anyway we'll we'll show you what we're going to do and then they have pcb guide layout and they show this kind of what you know kind of a star ground you bring all your grounds up to see out because it's a low impedance point right it's a capacitor low impedance so you got this red one which i call low noise or analog ground and then your green is a power to the VCC, so it's a little bit higher power. And then your black one might be even a little bit higher power, but they all kind of come up and they're all referenced to this point right here, which is your low impedance point, which for your sensing of your current, you come from I sense to ground. You want that uh, to be accurate and that's the way to do it. So voltage loop compensation, and then we go into a bunch of compensation stuff, which just kind of stuff can be kind of mathy and, and complex. And I can show you a simpler way to do this, but I'll walk you through some of this stuff later, like say in another video, just kind of paging through so you can see all the stuff they go. They make it look so complex, but really guys, it doesn't need to be that complex. We're going to do the KISS method, right? So, there we go. I'm just kind of paging through kind of quick, just to show you There's some graphs down here showing loops. But yeah, so let's go look at the math on this thing, okay? All right, guys. So this is the block pad software I use uh, to do the math. And I did a video just, just before this one on this software and kind of showed how it used. But I'm just showing it again where I do my equations. So just in case you didn't see the other one and you kind of see the equations I follow, I follow that app note and I added maybe some of the equations like this one right here uh, to come up with the capacitance. So I think I'm gonna basically use double the size of capacitance almost from what the first two equations might have shown, okay? And that's based on a step load on the output. So those of you that are concerned about you know, a lot of base notes and having enough power without dropping out your power. That's how we're doing this, okay? And so the power supply should be able to regulate through as long as you have the right capacitance on your output. So there, there we go. All right, guys, so this is KiCad. And some of you guys wanted me to do this in dip trace. So I think I might do that too. But here's the KiCad schematic and when you uh, started up it comes up with this editor and you have all these different options PCB or symbol editor and uh, We're gonna go to schematic right here And there's the schematic as it is right now. So let me see can I hit this one? I think the zooms into and That's what we have right now. Okay, here's a kickstart circuit. This is how we provide the VCC input we have a Zener diode and this uh, little diode inside the BJT transistor that will help set that voltage, okay? 200 ohm resistor will help us drop some voltage. Now, 
I've kind of selected some of these parts. When we start doing the PCB layout, then we'll go back and make sure that we can get all these parts. But I've got a bridge rectifier here. I've got all the parts we need. And I've got the control I see down here with the low, low noise ground, okay? So it's connected right here. But really, like we're going to you know, show, is that we'll try to bring the grounds to this 560 microfarad. We'll try to bring these capacitors so they all kind of join the same ground. So we have a really low noise ground plane right here, really low impedance. And our current sense resistor is right here. See, it's going to current sense. So the voltage from the current sense coming in here is really between here and this ground, right? So here's the two pickup points right here. That's kind of why I showed the point right here. But really this resistor will be close to this capacitor over here and this transistor. So these things are all going to be close together, okay? As the current comes through here, it'll go through the resistor and we'll pick that up. And these guys here, this is the voltage compensation, these three parts. This guy's current compensation. This resistor chooses a frequency, sets the frequency. Okay, and this RC filter just helps kind of filter off some of the spikes that might happen when the current pulses through the resistor, and that comes back here. Okay, then we have our voltage divider on the output that gives us our voltage feedback. We have our output capacitor, our input capacitor, we talked about the kickstart circuit and then the most important parts of the boost circuit is the FET, the inductor, the diode right here. So these three parts right here is what creates our boost inductor, okay? Our boost output as well as input and output caps. And then this is a diode that you, you don't really have to have, but it's nice to have. It kind of, you don't have this inrush current goes through the inductor and maybe cause some problems there. So you just kind of bypass it to help charge up this capacitor until this guy gets up and running. Then this guy doesn't have to charge the capacitor from zero. So it also helps the converter and the transistor here not having to charge this big capacitor from zero volts. It's already up to the peak of the AC coming in. So in the States, if I have 120, I have about 180 volts here just before this guy kicks on. So there's our schematic where I have it now. Here's our output to our next converter stage and we'll have an EMI filter that feeds this bridge rectifier, okay? All right, so there we go. There's where we stand today. Hey guys, I've got a few, uh, a few meters here. I got a review. So in videos upcoming, I'm gonna do a review on this super cool meter, really cool meter, works Bluetooth. I got these two me meters from Kai Wheats. So we got to do a review on these. These are little pen type meters. And then I have this really nice ideal meter, which kind of blows the shirts off. Oh, did I give it away off the, well, of course, it's a Fluke 117. So anyway, uh, got these two meters. Yeah, we're going to do some reviews on this stuff. Will this stuff stand up? So let me know what you think. <laughs> uh, why don't you vote which one you want to see first, second, or third, or if you even care. Uh, but give me a vote. Don't give a thumbs down one if you don't want to see them. That means you don't like the video. That doesn't help YouTube analytics. But it does help YouTube analytics to give me a thumbs up or just like the video. So appreciate that. And I appreciate my patrons. Two thumbs up to you guys. And, um, you know, there's also a, a thank you or something like that button down below where you can buy a cup of coffee, support the channel that way, or use the links to Amazon, all kinds of stuff. All right, guys, so that schematic, what do you think? I think that's really cool software that can show you how to do your math, and that way you can save it. You don't lose it like you do in a, you know, when you write it down in a notebook. <laughs> so anyway, and you can reuse it when we do a higher power amplifier or lower power. So I think that math software is cool. The uh, Kai, or KiCad, is it KiCad? I think someone corrected me, I think it's KiCad. So the KiCad software, free, everybody can use it. There's another very inexpensive, and I think there's a free version of DipTrace. So I think, it, let me know if you want to see DipTrace as well, okay? Uh, you know, uh, comments down below really helps YouTube analytics below, just 
you know, quick comment uh, is helpful. So, all right, so that's the schematic so far for the PSC section. So now we're going to start doing the next converter, okay, active clamp four converter. So I'm going to show you how to do that design, and we're going to select components for that too, because as we get that one finished, we'll be ready to go to board layout. At that point, we need all our components chosen. So we're going to choose parts that there's plenty in stock, so we don't have a problem with that, all right? At least, hopefully, we don't have a problem. So, all right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Either a review. I also have an audio amplifier back here that's dying to get it into this new box I bought, and I need to get that done so I can give it to my friend and let him listen to it. So I've got that video, too. Man, i got so many videos to do. Just need time. So thanks for watching. Let's jump to it. See you next time.